Let us invite back on stage Mr. Ken Johnson as he explains to us what the JBoss Way is all about. Thank you. Well, I'm going to try and pick up pretty much where uh, Chris just left off. Uh, but first, I'm going to do a little bit of setup. I'll go through quickly, and then we'll talk about what XPaaS is. Uh, so you've seen some tech, you've seen some slides like this. Business is changing. This is the reason for PaaS. I think Chris just made a compelling argument for why PaaS is, is relevant in today's IT landscape. Um, we love, you know, we love technology and like to talk about technology, but it's, it's important to keep in mind the reason behind it. The reason we're doing PaaS, the reason we're doing XPaaS is because of this. So IT's mission is to make the business work more efficiently. Uh, but in the age of these rapidly accelerating demands, things we've talked about over the last presentations, there's a, an IT innovation gap is developing. The ability for the business, the, the business demands are increasing while the ability to, for IT to keep up is decreasing, leading to uh, an innovation gap. Um, and this is, most, this is particularly acute in the area of application development and delivery. So a little context. So over the past few years, if you listen to the, the media, you listen to analysts and other pundits, they've declared the death of the packaged application, or they've declared the death of the custom application, right? And depends on what day and which way the pendulum is swinging. Um, the reality is uh, both custom developed applications and packaged applications continue to be important. And I would actually assert that if you think of packaged applications not as your traditional SAP or sort of your big on-premise applications, SaaS applications are packaged applications, right? Salesforce is a packaged application. Uh, Sugar CRM is a packaged application. The adoption of more packaged applications is driving the need to develop more do-it-yourself or custom applications. Because every new packaged application you adopt is a new silo in your enterprise that you then have to connect to access the data, integrate it with the rest of your systems to deliver application value to your users. So package app adoption is driving do-it-yourself or custom applications, particularly in the area of integration. Uh, last year, Forrester uh, did a survey across, uh, uh, across large enterprises, and they found that about an equal amount of investment was going into uh, package application adoption and deployment to custom application development. So whatever that ratio is, whether it's even, it's 50%, 50%, or 60-40, the platform that you run your applications on is critically important, right? You, you need to be able to provide development flexibility, need to provide uh, integration capability, you need to provide the ability to evolve and grow your applications, to adopt technologies and approaches like DevOps that Chris was talking about. And this is where XPaaS comes in. As where, where Chris's last slide was talking about, you know, uh, the marriage of middleware technology and, and, uh, and OpenShift. That's what XPaaS is about. It's not so much a, a, a thing. You don't buy XPaaS. It's an initiative. It's a strategy. The X in XPaaS is in many ways a response to, you know, Gartner, I think Gartner uses the term, but there's every kind of PaaS out there. There's A PaaS and I PaaS and BPM PaaS and M PaaS and, you know, whatever you want to insert in there. So you said, the heck with that, it's X PaaS. X PaaS is where X is the middleware technologies and capabilities you need brought to the platform as a service. So right now what we have, and we'll, we'll talk a little more detail, Right now, we have our JBoss Enterprise Application Platform available on OpenShift. It's been there for almost uh, close to two years now. And our, our uh, Enterprise Web Server, our Tomcat offering, is also available uh, on OpenShift and OpenShift Online and Enterprise. And, and one thing, I know Chris talked about this already, and I'll just touch on it a bit here. He, he kind of walked through how, uh, how OpenShift works, you know, the brokers and the nodes, et cetera. So I won't cover that again here. But it's important to consider that uh, OpenShift comes in three flavors, right? There's OpenShift Origin, that's our community project, the upstream. We have OpenShift Online, that's our hosted pass. We host OpenShift for the public to use. So you can go to openshift.com and come and access Gears as a free tier. You can try out our software, play with it for free. We host that for, I think Daniel quoted this morning, over two million apps have been deployed on OpenShift Online since its inception. That's a lot. And this same code base that we're running in online hosting that load, that is available in OpenShift Enterprise for you to run on-premise in your enterprise. 
So the same technology that can host and scale and secure that many simultaneous users is what you can benefit from when you run it on-premise. So OpenShift Online is for public paths. OpenShift Enterprise is for you to become a cloud provider to your constituents, whether that's delivering services to other lines of business, whether it's delivering capabilities to your end users. Right? In OpenShift Online, Red Hat is the cloud provider. With OpenShift Enterprise, you are the cloud provider. Okay, so why, why XPaaS? Well, for the first, you know, so some, to level set a little bit, enterprise applications are complex. We've talked about the three-tier application, the database, the middle tier, and the web tier. That's a very simple application, right? It sounds complicated. It's easy to talk about that because it's easy to think about scaling the web tier or scaling the data tier, scaling the middle tier. In fact, most applications are way more complicated than that. You have Java messaging connecting different subsystems together. You have EJBs. You have uh, legacy systems that you're tapping into. You know, think of an application that does um, a loan approval. Somebody so, applies for a loan. Well, you have to check their credit. You have to check their history with the bank, maybe the account balances they have. You have to touch many different systems, both internally and externally. You have to make decisions, all to render a decision. Am I going to give this individual a loan or not? That's not a simple three-tier application with a database on the backside, right? That's a complicated application. So the first step of, of simplifying that is introducing the PaaS layer, introducing the development standardization, ease of use, and operational control that a platform as a service provides, whether that's going to be run as a public PaaS or as a private PaaS. This is what OpenShift provides. But what XPaaS is bringing is those higher order services beyond the, the three-tier simple, simple web application to address those needs where customers have uh, the need to do complex integrations, to provide business process orchestration, to provide complex transformations, to provide a service-oriented architecture in the cloud where you're building sets of services that are recomposed and recomposed to deliver uh, information through different channels. You need a higher order set of services beyond just EAP, just the application platform. And that's where JBoss Middleware plus OpenShift come together to form XPaaS services for OpenShift. So it's really a unification of the platform to deploy modern complex applications to bring the capabilities that developers expect in modern enterprise middleware on premise, bring it to a platform as a service environment, the ease of use and control that it provides. Okay, so the way we're breaking this down uh, for starters is uh, into basically IPaaS, BPM paths, and MPaaS, uh, which are the, you know, the, the X's in XPaaS, if you will, um, and actually APaaS. And we'll start, uh, we'll start with APaaS. So all of these running on top of, uh, of OpenShift Enterprise, um, and some are also available in OpenShift Online. So let's take them, let's take them one by one. First is application paths. So this is essentially our EAP, the JBoss Enterprise Application Platform, our JEE application server provisioned through OpenShift. This is available both in OpenShift Enterprise and OpenShift Online. Uh, it is delivered as a cartridge, so you can, develop, you can develop your applications, you can develop your application code in Eclipse, push the application code up to the paths, it is compiled, deployed, and made available immediately. Alternately, you can actually build a standard binary. You can compile your application on your, on your desktop and push your binary up to, to OpenShift. So you don't, have to, you don't have to push code up there. You can build your app as you normally would. So maybe you're deploying it on some on-premise infrastructure and deploying to the cloud. Either way is available. The same, uh, the same code runs regardless whether it's EAP on bare metal, EAP in OpenShift Enterprise, EAP in OpenShift Online. Uh, the PaaS user, user interface simplifies the deployment experience and simplifies the development process. Uh, this has been available in, as I mentioned, in OpenShift Enterprise for just under two years and available in OpenShift Online for just over, over one year. Okay, moving on to integration paths. Now, integration paths is something where, that's under development right now. Uh, it centers on a Red Hat JBoss Fuse. Uh, and also our JBoss AMQ technology. So Fuse is our, uh, our integration product, or ESB. 
So this is the technology to do transformation, mediation, connectivity between different applications and different data sources that have different formats. Uh, so we, are, we have Red Hat JBoss Fuse available in OpenShift Online. You can go there right now to OpenShift Online and try it. It's in what we call developer preview. That means it's available for you to, to try it, give feedback, learn how it works. It is based on our 6.1 release of Fuse, which is generally available. Uh, right now, we are working on uh, bringing Red Hat JBoss Fuse and AMQ to OpenShift Enterprise. And very soon, later this year, we're going to be offering that fully supported for on-premise use. So you'll be able to leverage the power of Fuse and OpenShift Enterprise to deliver capabilities to your, uh, to your consumers and build the next level of, of integration applications. Particularly important as you adopt the SaaS uh, style applications we've talked about, you can build more complex integration applications uh, and run them, uh, them on-premise uh, in a cloud. Um, the PaaS user interface that you'll see when you're, when you're using uh, Fuse in, uh, in, uh, in OpenShift is the same sophisticated web user interface you'll see with Fuse when you're running it on bare metal. So Fuse has a web console that allows you to provision messaging brokers, and integration routes, etc. You, whether you're running that on-premise or whether you're running that in OpenShift, the development experience doesn't change. You have a very nice continuity. So if you want to deploy on-premise, you deploy to OpenShift, you don't have to learn a new set of skills, you don't have to learn a new way of working with it. The same skills you already have are transferable across the platforms. And I say we've had uh, you know, a, lot of our, you know, a lot of our customers, Fuse is a very popular product for us, and we've had a, a strong demand for Fuse and OpenShift Enterprise to work together, so we're eagerly uh, awaiting its, its uh, general availability in the near future. Um, integration paths right now, it, we talk about it in terms of Fuse, but it's also going to include our data virtualization product, uh, which I mentioned uh, in my previous session. So data virtualization is uh, for connecting to heterogeneous distributed data sources and, and unifying data virtually. Um, these products, a data vert product and an ESB, on premise, they're typically used as two separate products. But when you think about iPaaS, these, these products kind of come together in the iPaaS world. Because when you're integrating applications, you're almost always integrating data as well, and, and vice versa. So it's natural to bring these together. So you're going to see our data virtualization technology also coming to our iPaaS, uh, our iPaaS offering on OpenShift. Next up is, is BPM Paas. So BPM Paas is uh, the, bringing our BPM suite to OpenShift. Again, this is available today in OpenShift Online, so you can come to OpenShift Online, try out our BPM suite, uh, and kick the tires and give feedback. It's not supported, it's still in developer preview. Uh, what you can do with BPM paths is you can, you can create, oh, I see a typo on my slide. You can create process models using the cloud service, so there's a web-based interface to build BPM N2 compatible process models. You can do that all through a hosted environment. You can export these business processes, the process models, out of the system as XML. So you can exchange them with other systems. You can share these process models with other users. Uh, you can run the BPM engine in the cloud. You can run it on-premise. So you can essentially design your process model using a shared hosted environment, but deploy it to a production environment that may be running on bare metal. You can orchestrate across different services or different applications. So think of BPM as a higher level orchestration. An ESB has low-level orchestration, call this, then this, then this, work in sort of a pipeline. BPM provides a higher-level abstraction, very suitable for, for cloud-based deployments and for SaaS-style uh, integration. Uh, again, here, the, the platform as a service, the PaaS, OpenShift, helps simplify the configuration and deployment of that. This happens to run on top of our application platform as a service as well. BPM PaaS includes our business rules management system. So everything you can do in BPM includes what you can do with BRMS, so complex event processing, uh, automated uh, decision making, rules, development, testing, execution, management, all present and all part of BPM paths. As I said, available as developer preview and OpenShift Online now, coming, I would say, early next year to OpenShift Enterprise. So you'll be able to leverage OpenShift Enterprise on-premise with, with the BPM suite. Okay, the next up is mobile paths. So mobile paths is a little bit different than the other technologies. The other technologies are 
currently products. They're available as you can purchase from products and use them on premise today. They're available in developer preview coming soon to OpenShift Enterprise. In the case of mobile paths, we have introduced a community technology called AeroGear. An AeroGear is a, a community project in the JBoss community that's focused on uh, mobile push notification, uh, security, and data encryption. So it enables you to take advantage of the Google, uh, Android, and iOS push networks. So your app, you can write applications that can then push mobile notifications out to people's handheld devices if those devices support uh, push notifications. So if you build an application on the, on the APAS and you want it to be able to notify uh, mobile clients, you can tie into this over both networks. So uh, AeroGear supports, you know, integrated with different kinds of applications. They could be uh, native, hybrid, or, or mobile web applications. Uh, this runs, uh, right now it runs in OpenShift Online. It's also uh, as developer preview. Uh, likewise, it's, uh, it's developer preview for on-premise use with, uh, with OpenShift Enterprise. So I think this, you know, this is the beginnings of our mobile strategy. You know, there's a lot more to mobile than push notification. So there's uh, some other technologies that we're, uh, we're working on now and expect to be making some announcements about soon in the mobile space that will also enhance our capabilities in terms of the mobile PaaS space. Sometimes mobile PaaS is called um, MBAS, Mobile Backend as a Service, where um, you think of backend as a service as providing all the backend connectivity to applications and systems to serve your mobile applications. So your mobile applications make requests for data, they make re requests for uh, taking some sort of action or process so uh, the back end is all that service tier that supports those mobile applications. And right now you can, you can do that with our iPaaS as your back end tier, and AeroGear is part of the front end tier with more to come, with more to come shortly. Okay, so I wanna put this all in the context. You've heard a lot of, uh, a lot of different technologies today from uh, virtualization and storage up through Linux, up through OpenStack, OpenShift Enterprise and, and middleware. And I just want to you know, highlight that all the benefits that come from RHEL, the security, the certifications, uh, everything that, that Chris talked about in terms of Linux containers and C groups are present in the OpenStack offering and available to users of OpenStack. They're present in the OpenShift offering and available to users of OpenShift. They're available to the users of middleware, whether middleware is running directly on RHEL, whether middleware is running on OpenShift as part of XPaaS, whether middleware is running on OpenStack. The, there's, there's so much value in the, the power of our operating system and the capabilities we're, we're providing there that we really have a complete, coherent, comprehensive uh, solution for application development, deployment, and delivery. Uh, and with that, I will wrap up a little bit early and I'll try again with some questions. <laughs> Any questions on XPaaS? What XPaaS is, what's available today? So is it possible to connect a Ruby gear to a Java gear? Ruby is it possible to connect a Ruby gear to a Java gear? So if you think about gears, um, when, you sp when you spin up a gear, it basically will instantiate the stack. Okay, so what you do in that stack is somewhat up to you. So if you, if you spin up an EAP instance, it's a Java container running, and you spin up a Ruby runtime, it's still incumbent upon you to you know, do something with that. So there's not some native connectivity that's gonna happen when these two things come together, like ah, Ruby and Java, and we just magically connect them. It depends on what your application code uh, wants to do. Do JRuby, yeah. Now I think, you know, Chris talked about this a little bit. One of the values of, of the cartridge model is we can put smarts, and, and you can too, into the cartridge. So if you spin up uh, an, uh, an APAS cartridge, the, the EAP cartridge, and then you start a MySQL cartridge or a Postgres cartridge, it will, the, the platform will detect that. It says, oh, you've spun up a database. You probably want to connect the application container and this database together. So it will automatically register the database as a data source with the application server. So you don't have to do that additional step yourself. 
Uh, and these are things as we bring the other technologies online that we're looking to add. What things can we, what things can we do to ease and automatically make connections for the user so we anticipate what they want to do when they bring different technologies. Some other things we're looking at is in the area of things like single sign-on. So there's, think about this, there's single sign-on. When you log into OpenShift, you log in to our developer console and you can access various development environments to do your development work. But you're building an application. Now, when your application that you want to deploy, you want to offer authentication services to your users of that application. So we want to offer a, a, an XPath service that is authentication and single sign-on. So you can use that in your application. So when people connect to your app, they have an authentication scheme and they can do single sign-on potentially across multiple applications that you develop. So it's single sign-on to our development tools and then a service so you can do single sign-on to your applications. There's a whole host of things we're working on beyond our product to, uh, to make XPath. Will this single sign-on look like OAuth, like Facebook, or? Well, actually, it's OAuth is, is the, the biggest driver, particularly in the mobile space. But social login is also very important. So things like Facebook and Google, yep. All these things are, uh, are in the works right now. So I know we talk mostly about product, but there's a whole ecosystem of additional work we're doing around that. And actually, with the transition from OpenShift 2 to 3, and the adoption of Docker, uh, there's really a lot of excitement. So we're going to look at packaging all of our middleware technologies. As we deliver them right now, they're, they're zip files, right? We deliver zip files that you can unzip and install. Uh, we're going to be delivering our middleware technologies as Docker images as well. So that way, if you want to run middleware as a Docker image on RHEL, you can do that. If you want to run middleware as a Docker cartridge on OpenShift Enterprise or OpenShift Online, you'll be able to do that as well. So uh, I think Docker is going to be a very interesting technology for us across the, across the portfolio. Thanks. Any other, uh, any other questions? Yes. Um, does uh, OpenShift Online mean that uh, with multiple gears that have been used, there will be no single point of Well, it depends if you've, how many cartridges you've spun up. You, you can certainly come and spin up one gear or one cartridge, and if that cartridge goes down, then you will have lost that one instance. Now, if you, you can spin up multiple gears of, say, EAP and have them be clustered, and you have abilities to make sure they're not running on the same physical host underneath or the same virtual machine, there's something called um, disaffinity or something? Yes, yeah, so you can make sure they're running on physically separate infrastructure underneath and establish an EAP cluster. That way, if one node was to go down, the other one would still be available. And beyond EAP, we're looking to extend that to other, the other platforms we bring to OpenShift as well. So it's how you use the platform that will give you the, the high availability and clustering you're looking for. And another area, so right now our, our uh, auto scaling is based pretty much on HTTP traffic. So we think of uh, APaaS and that, that three-tier application. You, uh, based on the number of incoming HTTP sessions, that determines when we decide to spin up another another gear automatically to distribute load. If the number of incoming connections is something, you know, I don't know, 50 or 100, we'll say, okay, it's time to spin up another one and then distribute that traffic across the web tier. Um, that's very good for web applications. But as we get into things like iPads, <coughs> there's other considerations for, for uh, scaling, right? It's not just HTTP traffic. It might be message queue depth. It might be service throughput. So beyond what we're introducing in our first GA, we're looking at a whole different range of, of metrics on which you might like to trigger scaling, because it's not just about HTTP traffic. It's a complex, a complex space. And I would say in terms of what we have here and what we're going to be offering, um, we're going to be well ahead of the competition. Honestly, the passes that are out there right now, they're de people are developing pretty lightweight applications, right? You know, PHP, the polyglot stuff is great, but they're pretty lightweight applications we'll be able to offer multi-protocol messaging to and from the cloud online and enterprise and build very sophisticated applications, bring all our enterprise capabilities to the paths ahead of what other people are doing out there right now. So it's very exciting. Just a comment here. Uh, I'm very excited to see all these uh, announcements, but uh, I'm also a bit uh, cautious because of the adage, less is more, and this is getting really complex. It's getting complex in terms of but the, world the, wor the, the problems we're addressing are complex, but think of it as a, think of it as a, a toolkit. 
you, we make it available, but it's up to you to use. If you only need a simple three-tier application, no need to introduce messaging. But, and if you need, to, if you need a, a solution for an Internet of Things messaging hub, you don't need an application server. You simply need a messaging solution, messaging endpoint in the cloud. So you use the pieces you need to solve the, the use case and problem at hand. But the world is complex. <laughs> Yes. Great. Well, if there are no other questions, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Johnson.